Welcome back guys. Uh, in the last video we have seen simple pendulum. We uh, figured out what was the time period of simple pendulum and we found that uh, t is equal to 2 pi and then root over l upon g where this l is length of pendulum here. So uh, from the support to the center of center of mass of this ball. Right? So, uh, and then M is the mass of uh, this T is the tension and W uh, this Mg is the weight of pendulum acting vertically downwards. Okay. And we found that T, the time period is 2 pi root over L upon G. Now there are a few things uh, to, to be noted here uh, and we will put that as laws of simple pendulum. Now first of all, I would say that, uh, uh, so whatever you see in the expression here, I am just going to write down that, okay. The time period is proportional to proportional to square root of length, okay, uh, L, okay, square root of length, okay. You are going to get these uh, notes in the uh, blog. Uh, of which the link will be shared in the description. Uh, when I say proportional, it is directly proportional. Okay, but then if it is inversely proportional, then I will state that. Okay, like here I am saying that it is this time period is inversely proportional to again square root of g. That is the acceleration of free fall or acceleration due to gravity at that place. So that means uh, if you are at equator, you will have certain, uh, you know, for the same length, if you are at equator, you will get certain uh, time period of the pendulum and the same pendulum if you take uh, to some uh, place on North Pole or maybe South Pole, okay, over there you will get different because uh, at poles, the value of acceleration due to gravity is greater than that at the equator. We have seen that in uh, motion in circle or circular motion. Okay, um, so over there, you know, at the at the uh, at the poles, the time period would be smaller. At the equator, it would be larger. Okay. Uh, now, all right. Now here I see only uh, this two pi, but then that is constant. Correct. So there should there is no possibility. Apparently, there is no possibility of stating some third or fourth laws here. Okay, but uh, we need to specify here. You can see that mass of Bob is M. Okay, mass of Bob is M. Do you see any uh, quantity related to mass here? No, we don't. So the time period of simple pendulum it is independent of mass. Okay, T is independent of mass mass of bob correct right? so it is dependent on length it depends on g at that place it is independent of mass and then the fourth one is so what about the amplitude do you see any term for amplitude here no correct right? so time period is independent of amplitude But then there is something that we need to uh, make clear over here. Okay, when we started, uh, uh, you know, discussing simple pendulum, we had certain assumptions. We had certain assumptions about an ideal simple pendulum. The first assumption was the string is massless. Okay, that means mass of string is very, 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 very small compared to mass of bob. Correct. The string is inelastic. Okay, it doesn't elongate okay the string is inextensible there is no extension due to weight in the string correct this, that was the third assumption the fourth assumption was there is no friction at this support okay now when does this question of friction at support come you know uh, i'll give an example uh, i give you one piece of copper wire okay and uh, i want you to 
cut that wire into two parts. Okay, so what would you do? Now you would say that we would take some uh, plier or some uh, uh, maybe a pair of scissors and cut it, but then no, you are not allowed to do that. You have to break it, you have to cut it, you have to break it anyway, you have to use your hands. Okay, what would you do? You cannot use any cutting tool. So, uh, if, you, if you ask me the, the, the same question, what I would do is I would take this wire, I will hold this wire, okay, now this is a marker, but then assume that this is a wire, okay, what I'll do is I'll just bend it like this, and then like this, and then like this, and then like this, okay, I'll do this repeatedly. After some time, you would find that the point where you are bending it, okay, uh, it becomes hot, the temperature over there rises and after some time, after some time, there is some crack created in the wire and the wire breaks. Okay, so that is what we do normally. Okay, now why does the wire break here? The same thing can happen over here. Okay, this rigid support, it is holding, holding this wire like this and when the pendulum is oscillating, there is that repeated, you know, this motion is there. Okay, some deformation is there and because of that, because of that, there may be friction over there. Okay, and we are assuming that there is no friction at the support. And that is the reason, see, practically, uh, practically friction is going to be there and that is the reason why a pendulum, a simple pendulum, after some time, it stops. Okay, its period does not change, but then it stops after some time. Okay. Um, and that is what we are. Uh, 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 that the those are the assumption here. Assumptions here. Okay. This point, the time period is independent of amplitude. You know the other ex, uh, assumption that we had over here in the beginning is that the angle of the semi-vertical angle of this pendulum. Okay, the angle made by the pendulum with the vertical, that angle is small. Okay, and if that angle is small, then sine theta would be, you know, approximately equal to theta. And then that would make it simple harmonic motion. And that would, you know, uh, affect whatever we derived after, uh, you know, in, in the due course. Okay, so these four uh, statements, you know. Uh, they can be called laws of simple pendulum. The first law you can call it law of length. The second one you can call it law of uh, acceleration due to gravity. The third one is called law of mass. Okay, and the fourth one it is called law of isochronous. Law of isochronous. Okay. Now, of course, these notes you will be getting uh, on the blog, and the link will be shared in the description. Um, in the next video, we are going to talk uh, about something called um, free oscillations and forced oscillations and maybe damped oscillations, right? Till then, goodbye.